Yeah, it was tough. That that whole that whole morning was tough for me, man. Like that morning was I I I got up late, and then I went to go to Dunkin' Donuts so I could get my coffee, and it took the valet forever to get my car, and then that that took even longer because you have to valet at that hotel. You don't have a choice. So then, like by the time I got back, and then you know the coffee did what it's supposed to do. Good. And you know took care of that. So that we were not having any issues on the race. And, uh, you know, so then by the time we got down there, I was freaking out just because there's a million people and it's this whole new thing and I'm freaking out. And I realized my phone was at 58%. So I was like, oh, no, why is my phone at 58%? This is not okay. Uh Like, what happened? I need this. So I threw my battery on and charged it for like the 45 minutes while I still had Jen there with me. And like was like just charged my phone, and everything was fine. And then uh, we were with Nicole and Justine, and then they left, and I was with Jen, and everything was fine. And it was like, all right, I need to go do a quick little run. Like I stretched. I was like, I'll go do a little quick little shakeout. So just went and did a quick little thing. I was like, I'm running out of time. I just gotta go. I gotta I gotta go do this. So I went and did that. Came back to her and I was going to give her my battery from my phone and give her everything else and be like, you take all of this and I'm going to, I'm going to go. And then at that exact moment, my watch flashed and went off 10% battery life. And I looked down and I was like, that's like a running nightmare. (laughs) I lost it. I lost it right there. And Jen looks at me, she goes, are you, are you crying right now? And I was like, yes. I was like, I was like, you, This, I was like, you don't understand. Like at that exact moment, it was sheer panic. I was like, this, I was like, this is my life while I'm out on the course. Like my watch is my, (laughs) my watch is my life. Like I, I, it it tells me how fast I'm going. It gives me my heart rate. Like it gives me everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to like collect myself and figure my life out with 10 minutes before the race. Mm -hmm. And I'm still like trying to figure out what to do. I'm like, can I charge it? No, I can't do that. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So it took me a minute to realize that the app is on my phone. I can run the app on my phone because I'm taking my phone because I'm recording every mile. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have my phone. I was like, so, all right, what am I, what am I going to be missing? I was like, I'll get my times. I'll get my elevations. I was like, I literally just won't have heart rate. I was like, okay, I can, I can live with that. Like I'm going to have to, I don't have a choice, but it's better than nothing. So it was like like eight minutes left at this point before the race. And I'm like, okay. So at least I had it figured out. I had a, a plan that was going to get me through the race. And then at that point, that was where I left Jen. And I was like, all right, I got to go fi- go get to this corral and go figure things out. And then I saw Justine at the back of the 330 pack, which is where I wanted to be anyway. So I was like, cool, this is a good spot. Like, this is where I want to be. So great. Like, and then I kind of calmed myself down and then they started talking and going through the anthem and I started like I was like I just I threw the noise canceling in in my earbuds because I was like I just need to zone out for like two minutes Mm -hmm. because like this is a lot there's a lot of people and this is just like a lot and this is very different than all the small little community races that I've done in the past and this is a very different feel now and I'm just like trying to make sure that while I can take it all in at the same time, I was like, I, I need to focus on myself for at least a minute here. So I'm ready to go. And then the gun went off and off we went. (laughs) We collect the thoughts, just Zen. You needed that Zen. Mm Yeah. Yep. So how did the completely, I completely changed up my playlist two days before too. Like completely, like I completely just like threw my playlist out the window and said, I, I I knew it was going to be warm. So I was like, I want like a high energy playlist. I want something to push me through. If I'm going to hit this 330 goal, I need something. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just putting like a high energy playlist on and to just push me through. Give us an example of a couple of songs you had on there. What's high energy for you? So like I, it was actually just a Spotify like high energy workout playlist. Oh, so, so there was like okay, a whole pre-made. Yeah, yeah. So okay. pre-made. So that was which was good. But there were a couple songs on there that like I already knew and a bunch of them there were like, a bunch of stuff that was remixes and stuff which was That's good. Cool. So there were just like stuff I'm already familiar with and know but higher have a uh, higher beat. 
so like you know what one of those one of those songs though that just like gets you like it it puts you in a good mood but at the same time makes you like stop and think for two seconds is uh andy grammar um damn it feels good to be me i was like yes so that was in there at like a remix version and it was just awesome and i'm out there on the course like doing my thing just like grooving out there dancing i totally was i was singing away at certain times i'm like out there just grooving doing my thing i like it was warm but the heat didn't start to get to me until like mile nine ish mile ten ish is about when the heat started to bug me so i was feeling great i was like right on my pace everything was moving and grooving my watch officially died at mile seven uh-huh. no more time like so up until like if you watch the video i gave out my mile times until mile seven and then like mm, no more watch so like mm, no idea no idea so mile eight i'm just like mile eight watch died i don't know <laughs> nice. i don't know that would be some hit right so you know so i just had to do whatever and so it's it like i didn't really realize where I was until I hit mile 13. And it was at that point, I was like, mile 13. I was like, where am I at? I'm like, oh, I'm at an hour 45. I am dead on track. I was like, okay. But I knew the heat, like at that point, the heat was already starting to bug me. And I really had wished I didn't wear a t-shirt and I had worn like something without sleeves or something like, Mm -hmm. you know, so I was like this, like, uh, so I was like, oh, okay, this is brutal. So it's starting to, it was starting to pick up. And the heat got to be a little much. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull back a little and make sure that I've got some for the end. Like, I want to make sure that I can push through those last couple of miles. So I'd started to pull back a little, but not much. Like, I think I pulled back from like an eight minute pace to like 8.30 ish. So not like a lot, but enough to, that I could make it up on the end if I needed to. And then, uh, then mile 19 happened and it all went downhill. Mile 19. What happened at mile 19? That's where my legs started cramping up. So my my first cramp happened in my left leg. My left calf cramped up at mile 19. And I had to stop and stretch. And I was like, okay, that's not cool. Like, that's all right. That's going to obviously. And I think I even said in the video, I was like, that's going to happen again. Like you could just, I could just tell. Like there was just no way that wasn't going to happen. And then it, it wasn't even mile 20. And the right leg went. And I was like, oh, you got to be you kidding. Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I just would like, I'd stop and stretch and just do whatever. And I just was like, all right, I'll just, I'm just going to push through. I'm going to do whatever I can. And like, I, it, I probably should have taken more videos than I did because I took one at every mile and I probably should have taken some others of like the stretching and the BS Mm-hmm. And the emotions and like some of the emotions came through in the video, but not like the full extent, N- not like, like mile 20 was mile 19, like that hurt. And then mile 20 happened and they both cramped up. And I just like, I, it got to a point where I was like, this is not okay. But I'm, I was determined to finish that race. Like it was happening 21. And then like, I think I figured if it was 21 or 22, but I was like, I could see the state house in the distance. And like at that moment, like I lost it. Like lo- I was like, I was in so much pain. I just lost it. I was like, I'm going to get there. Like I, I, I will literally crawl across that goddamn finish line. If I have to, like, I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting to this goal. Like I worked way too hard to not cross that line one way or the other. And then so like every time my legs would cramp up, I would just, I'd stop. I, so mostly I would try to stop at the water tables if I could. I'd yeah. stop, grab two or three waters and just like chill for a minute, stretch, make sure I could rehydrate and then keep on going. And then I'd, I would run like a half mile to a mile until I physically just couldn't anymore because the pain was so bad yeah. that I had to stop and stretch again. And it was like, it was right around mile, like 22 and a half, the start of mile 23 is where I realized I wasn't sweating anymore. And I was like, awesome. So heat exhaustion is setting in. So I was like, and I, so I knew. 
were you just using the Encore support or did you carry anything with you at all? Like, were you allowed to have a camelback or a handheld or did you have goos and gels? I, and... Yeah, so I had my gels. So I, I did have my gels. I didn't have any other water. And in hindsight, I wish I had. I, mm-hmm. I wish I... So there, I saw other runners, not really with camelbacks, but I saw other runners that had like on the backs of their pouches had like the two little canteens. Yes. E- even that would have been perfect. It would have been perfect if I had those. A supplement, right? Yeah. Yep. So I kind of wish I had because the 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 I think they were they were underprepared. I think for the amount of heat as well oh. the the course. So Did like they run out? they're giving you these little baby water cups, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is not this is not enough. <laughs> That's on every like, course. This run. is not enough. That's what they do on every course. It was. Oh, it was there's so not brutal. enough. So it's yeah. like. So it's just Maybe so we that talk was to tough. These race directors, right? <laughs> I'm so taking notes, it was. Guys. <laughs> so it was. Uh, that was tough, right? So I'm trying to figure that out. And then, so I knew as soon as I stopped sweating, I knew what that meant. And I was like, I, I need to just, I need to take it easy. I need to stop at every aid station at this point. Like mm-hmm. I need to do whatever I need to do, to not be on the side of the course. And then the closer I got, the more and more people I saw down on the side, and I just felt so bad for all of them. And I was like, I'm. I don't want to be that person like so but I just you know I kept doing my thing kept taking the videos every mile and like I said hindsight I wish I had taken more to actually like convey how miserable that was Mm -hmm. because I don't think the video does a good job of conveying it because like mile 24 I was in so much pain but like I still found a way to like smile and make myself laugh being like people do this for fun like what is wrong with you people like you know i just i don't i just was trying to do anything at that point to just like get me through to the finish line like <clears throat> mile 25 hit and i was like had to stop and stretch again like mile 25 and a half i had to stop and stretch again and i was like i am gonna make it through and then so mile 23 go backwards there was a stupid hill and i was like i looked at it and i'm like i hate you i hate you so i walked like half that hill because i couldn't and couldn't run it i had to walk like half that hill and then so fast forward back to 25 and a half and i'm coming around and you're coming up to that last little spot for the finish line and it turns left and goes uphill before it goes downhill to the finish line and i just looked at it and i was like You've got to it be was freaking awful. kidding me. Awful. And it wasn't even that big, but it was enough where it you were steep. like, this is some sick, twisted joke, and I hate you. <laughs> like, that's what that was. But I was like, I am, I was like, at this point, I'm running, like, I'm not, I'm going to push through the pain at mm-hmm. this point because it's like, it's right there. I'm just going to do it. But I was actually, I was really glad at hindsight. I had everything on my phone instead of on my watch because the last few long runs I was playing music off my phone because I was so for most of my training I was using my watch for my times and playing music off my watch so I was taking my phone just for recording but it wasn't doing anything else all my music was on my watch my playlist was on my watch and I realized that that was killing the battery life on you know (laughs) so anything over like two two and a half hours and my watch wasn't going to cut it. Mm. So I started using the phone. So the downfall of that was the, if I was still using the watch for the run, it wasn't giving the metrics through my headphones. It was still, I could see them. I could look down at them, but I have it set that every five minutes it would tell me the time and my pace and my current heart rate. Um, But I wasn't getting that on the longer runs Mm -hmm. because it wasn't there. So having it through the phone, it actually gave me all those metrics still because my phone was hooked to my earbuds instead of my watch. So those last two miles, so, and it was great that the pacers were out there, right? So hour 30 was, or 3.30 was off the table. Like it, as soon as I got the first cramp, I knew 3.30 was off the table. It's fine. The 3.40 guy goes by me, fine. Whatever. I'll hit 345. I don't care. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's fine. The 345 guy goes by me. And I'm like, okay. I got like two and a half miles left. I'm like, okay. It's fine. You had to adjust your expectations, huh? 
yep, like 345. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. The 350 guy goes by me and I'm like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell, not today. Not today. This is no, no, no. I, my, my B goal was four hours and I was like, no, no, no. I, I can do this. I don't care. I will push through as much pain as I can. I can do this. And at the same time, I've got my phone going off in my ear. Three hours, 45 minutes, three hours, 50 minutes. And that last half mile, that last mile, I wanted to just like walk. Like I just, just wanted to walk, but just done. (laughs) I was just done. And then it went off and it was like three hours, 50 minutes. I said, not today. Not, no, not today. Like I'm doing this and that pushed me through. And then I had to stop at three and a half or 25 and a half. And I had to stop again. And I was like, oh my God. And it went off and it was like three hours, 55 minutes. And I was like, oh, oh no, 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 no. And I just like booked. And I was just like, I am, I am finishing this race under four hours. Like this is not happening to me. Like I am finishing this race in under four hours. Cause I had set that as a goal for myself. Mm-hmm. And Again, back to I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm here. I am thinking four hours is like well, that's a, a long issue. time, and I think that like <laughs> well, you're, you're, she's ready to yeah. punch him. I could do it but for like, you. I'm th- I'm thinking like four hours is like bad. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking like I'm not. It's not good enough. Like, it's not fast enough. Like, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not under four hours, so it's just like. I was determined to hit that that goal no matter mm-hmm. what. That was a rough day. I mean, it was rough. I have done 40 <clears throat> marathons now. Like the other, last weekend I ran Maine Coast wow. when you guys were running Providence. Yep. That day was not my day. I did a 510. How's that for you? <laughs> I walked like the last 8 miles. I was like, "Nope, not my day. Don't feel like it." But I've only done sub 4 twice. And that was on like perfect weather perfect conditions and i like ran my ass off so just be proud of what you Mm -hmm. did you accomplished something excellent especially for your very first marathon 